Yes, uh, I'm back on the road because, um, first of all, I like singing live. Uh, I like singing especially in America because we have so many really nice fans here and they seem to want us back so we, we come back we come back uh, also you know the business music business completely changed now and uh, basically you can't really rely only on record sales you have to actually go out and play live that's why uh, during the last two years since the release of my previous album I have been touring a lot in Poland and Japan and, and in America. This is I think our third visit in the States and um, yes this time it's even better because we just um, released our new album which was recorded in Poland in Łódź. Uh, it was, it's basically a live concert but there are three uh, studio tracks, new songs, which I wanted to get out there because uh, uh, we started, Danny and I, my partner, started to write new songs and I didn't want to wait for another studio album, so we just squeezed them into this album and uh, one of the songs on this album is called uh, From Newport to London, it has a, gives a bit of a feel of traveling, <laughs> that's why um, we call the whole album From Newport to London. This is, I, have, I have very complicated feelings about Chicago because the first time I came here, it was literally 30 years ago. <laughs> so I was quite young and uh, also it was literally straight from the communist country. And my first serious trip to, to a Western world was really then. So the, Chicago was really my first experience of the Western world. And I was, it was such a shocking uh, transition from a little town in Poland where I lived and then, oh, yes, I started to sing a little bit and I moved to Warsaw, but it still seemed very provincial uh, next to Chicago. When I arrived here, everything was just overwhelming, uh, you know, very, the opulence and the richness and the, the, the availability of everything was really mind-blowing to me and I felt slightly depressed. I think the reason for it was because I felt that the world is quite too contrasting for me, that was too contrasting. I thought that how come, you know, we have a different life in Poland completely and this place was just so different. After a while, I, I st stayed here for quite a few months. First time I stayed six months and next time again six months. And, um, and I missed my country. I think I started to appreciate much more when this availability of everything was so huge that I actually appreciated that, that little life I had in Poland. Very strange feelings. Uh, you know, I was constantly in two minds about, I was thrown into this confusion about what the world is like. That's why I, I, I wasn't, I can't even tell you that I was very happy here at the first time around, especially that I felt intimidated by everything. And uh, the fact that people had so much and I had nothing, it was kind of, frightening a little bit to me. Uh, the second time it was a little bit easier and of course when I came back with having a record out and and having a little career going, it, my feelings to, to what Chicago completely changed. I felt like a citizen of this town. I didn't feel inferior anymore. <laughs> So strange. Every time I come here, I'm, I'm sort of shocked how, how I feel at home <laughs> now. But that, those first feelings were sort of still stuck in my mind. And I worked with a band which was based, uh, the first time around, I worked with a band which was based here in Chicago. And we played in lounges and, and sort of bars here around Chicago. The second band I worked with, we played around Chicago, around Illinois, and even once I think we went to Indiana and stuff like that. But they, these were very tiny, uh, tiny places. But even then, I kind of had a few, few fans. <laughs> I sang in English mainly and we sang sort of popular songs that were known from the charts. But people uh, gave me the first signs of the appreciation and I thought, oh, 
you know. That's strange that a little Polish girl, little Cinderella, <laughs> can be noticed here and, and appreciated. I felt very flattered by it. And now when I play here and I actually have fans who come and pay tickets to see me, it's, it's such a... You have no idea how strange it feels that, that actually people now uh, come here to, from a completely different, <laughs> different world as if, and I, and I feel so differently when I come here. But today we drove, up, drove in here and I was thinking, gosh, this town is so beautiful. I used to live here and it's, it's so overwhelming. I should really get to know it again, sort of closer now with this new attitude to life and different, different, different look at this whole thing. When I used to be at school, uh, in, still in Poland, I collected records and um, I had lots of black American uh, records, like that type, like, you know, Tamla Motown records, uh, Supremes, uh, Dion Warwick, um, uh, my favourite was Aretha Franklin. Uh, I had like, this greatest hits album and that was really my tr most, most treasured album. But also, I, uh, at the same time, I liked English things like Beatles, for example. I loved, um, going back to America, Burt Bacharach songs. Um, you know, all these influences really were very much mainly American. But I remember that moment when I once went to Krakow uh, to a club uh, with some friends and somebody played Brazilian samba. Actually, it was, uh, he played Jobim songs. And I felt, God, I kind of knew this this music, but not really that well. But I thought, Jesus, this is exactly what I love, really, truly. I felt so comfortable in in that in this kind of music, and I started to uh, look for records, and I found um, Astrid Gilberto album, and and Jao Gilberto albums, and and got into it much more. And uh, yes, I, I don't know what it is. I can sing whatever. I can sing any pop songs and even soul songs, but I really feel truly happy when I sing samba. And I can't explain it, what, why it is, because I'm Polish and I'm, there's no connection really with, with, this, um, with, this, with Brazil. But still, I have inside me, maybe maybe there is a connection between Poles and Brazil that I'm not aware of, <laughs> but I, I really just always love this music. And when I came to England and I met a couple of boys, Danny White and Mark Riley, and we started to work as a band called Matt Bianco, I was just in heaven because all the influences were Brazilian, mainly Brazilian. A little bit from Cuban too, but mainly Brazilian. And I just could not believe that I, I was I could sing that music and actually, you know, do it as my profession. So I, after I left the band, I continued, and um, still, it's a huge part of my style and my repertoire. <laughs> Again, love is uh, responsible for everything and I met, I met somebody who is English and I followed him to Britain and uh, although the love and the relationship didn't survive, I stayed in England and I, I've been living there almost 30 years now, 30 years. So uh, yes, that accent is probably... First of all, when I came to England, I came actually straight from America and the, I remember going to some English lessons and the teacher said, oh my gosh, we have to get rid of this accent because it's so strange hearing you speaking English with American accent and with Polish accent mixed together. So uh, she kind of took it upon herself to, to teach me how to speak properly. But <laughs> uh, yes, I, I think I, I got rid of my all my Americanisms, but you know, after so many years, you, you know, you can't help it, especially having a little bit of musical ear <laughs> to, to actually copy people, people who live around you. Almost 95% of <laughs> everything is true. Things that happened to me are definitely documented in uh, my songs. 
Some of those songs are written not exactly about me, although they are written in the first person, about, about people who, whom I know, like friends and family. But a huge, huge majority of these songs are really about something I know. I think that's the only... I'm not a poet, so I have to write something from the heart, otherwise it would sound really false. And I, uh, I, I think it's very important to me to be completely truthful in, in your work. You cannot, you, can, you cannot fake emotions. And if you sing about something that actually really happened to you and you know firsthand, then obviously it speaks to people. And I think these songs, the, especially, especially, I, I could actually even name titles of some of the songs that I've written in the past that uh, actually talk about something really deeply emotion, deep emotions that actually I, I, I experienced, I get the best reaction to those songs from people who went through the same thing and, and they maybe also are in need of hope or, or, I don't know, uplifting, something, something that lifts their spirits. I often write something to help myself, you know, just to cheer myself up. Because if I wanted to write about all the sad things all the time, I could drag people. I, don't, I know that some people made a career out of that, but I just didn't want to go on stage and, and sing, reliving the same old sad stories, which happened to all of us. So I, I decided to just to concentrate on something that can actually bring some optimism to people's lives. It's changed over the years. You know, when I started, um, actually my first album, well, with Matt Bianco, it was in, 80, in 1983, and then mine own was 88 or 87. Uh, I remember the interviews at the beginning. I mean, the people would talk to me about like somebody from the third world, uh, and I definitely felt a little, I felt quite patronized by journalists especially who thought that I was this, this sort of little girl from the from the you know really lost or poor country I had to actually explain to them sometimes that actually my life there was happy and I think I made my mission to open people's eyes on Poland on on its real spirit and uh, and on on the wealth of other things not just maybe material things so um I think that's why I think that I can do much more, much more for Poland by singing in English but making those little Polish accents so people know uh, that I'm Polish and also stress positive things about Poland rather than, than singing in Polish make, make them completely separate from, from what I do. And I didn't never wanted to preach but, but I, uh, in interviews I actually always try to be very, very positive about my country. Now, over the years, when the European Union, uh, you know, Poland got absorbed into European Union and Poland is doing well, you know, in material sense, the whole thing changed now because, you know, the whole world had a financial crisis. We actually didn't have it in Poland, which was one of the few countries which didn't. Maybe because we always were careful with money, who knows? <laughs> Maybe that's the reason. But uh, over the years I noticed that nobody is now talking about you know, Poland being uh, you know, sort of backward country. But at the beginning, it definitely, I could see over those 30 years how perception of Poland changed from much more positive. funny because I tell you if you came to my house you would be surprised <laughs> because it looks like a one big library I uh, I had a I was in this very lucky position in my life always my parents weren't poor and then later on uh, I work started to work when I was 18 because not because I wanted to be independent but but I was dragged into the Polish band and we, we, we uh, so I started to work quite early Although I tried to go to university and I, then I was br brought back to, to music work. So I always had some money and because of that I almost never used libraries. I always used to buy books and that's why my, my house looks like... I, I don't know where to put books anymore because every room is full of them. Uh, so I didn't use library as much as my friends and my... Um, 
my family, uh, but I remember going to libraries and, and using it for different reasons, like because there was a computer there or there was a social circle there. For that reason, was it was wonderful to actually ha meet up with people who were similar mi similarly minded, you know. And I was hiring other things, you know, which I did, not necessarily books, like, you know, CDs or, you know, other, because it's libraries, not just, it's not just books, obviously. So uh, it was a bit of a cultural center everywhere I moved, even now in England where I live. I think the center of my little village is our library there too. Um, so yes, libraries always had some kind of um, importance to me, but not on a kind of book. Because I, I, I tell you, I love having books. And I, uh, every time when, I, when there's a good book appears, I need to buy it. I need to hold it. And I love smelling it, and I just like to hold it. And then when I when I finish it, I hug it. Sometimes <laughs> it's not like I can't imagine reading a book on Kindle. Yeah, I don't know if you have it in America, Kindle. Of, yeah, of, of course. I, I see people on the trains reading this through through some you know sort, sort of iPads and stuff. I, I just I'm not. I, maybe I'm old fashioned. <laughs> Well, since I came back, since, since I moved to England uh, 30 years ago, I, I must say I read predominantly in English. It was, at the beginning, it was driven by the, the desire to improve my language and, and because I, had, I have to write words, you know, you just want to learn as much as possible uh, of new language. But then it actually I developed true love to to for English um, written um, books, and uh, I, I love classics. Actually, I, I love Jane Austen, for example. But I also read modern things. Um, there's always something good, especially you know we've got this in England. There's this Booker Prize um, uh, contest. It's a bit like Pulitzer, but but in England it's called yeah. Booker Prize, and always the winning books I try to read because they are always excellent. I, I trust those judges who, who judge, who choose the, uh, the books. So, um, of course, they are completely new, modern things. So, I don't have a, one specific uh, style or, or, or interest in literature. I, I read everything, really. Um, from completely just frivolous um, novels to something biographical or um, historical, you know, just different things. I'm kind of interested in history too, so uh, recently more and more in the history of Poland, you know, it comes with age, I think, that you start to dig into the past of your own country. You, you want to, you, because you stop believing in what you what you were taught at school. <laughs> so you want to know more about what really happened in the past. I think what I'm proudest of is, I, I just, I tell you, there's a few things that I love. I love bringing people, uh, smiles on people's faces. I like making them feel, making them feel good. And if I perform in, F in Philippines and I see people who really love our stuff and all of our songs and sing along with us, or Japan, or, or even here in the States, uh, I just feel like I've done something good to bring something, something really positive and optimistic to people's lives. So I think this is my best achievement. And on the other hand, I'm also proud that I'm spreading the good Polish posit kind of positive side of my country. I always I'm emphasize it because I think it's important for me that people realize what we are like.